All right, so chapter one or chapter four starts with radian and degree measurement. Basically, just learning the difference and how to figure out how to get from one to the other. There are things like coterminal angles in this section, um, intercepted arc, that kind of stuff. All is in four one. So we start with the parts of the angle. This is just some vocab terminology. So on the bottom is the initial side of the angle or where it starts. And then the terminal side is where it ends. The direction will either be determined by an arrow like you see here, because it could go clockwise or counterclockwise. Or you'll eventually learn to do it with the degree, like a positive angle or a negative angle. The vertex, like every vertex, is where those two sides meet. There are two types of angles, positive and negative. Positive angles are generated by going counterclockwise, okay? So the opposite direction the hands on a clock go. And the negative angle goes clockwise, the other direction. You're going to hear a lot about radians. So a radian is basically a unit of measurement that we're going to use, okay, instead of degrees. And we're going to learn how to go back and forth between the two of them. But it's defined as the measure of the central angle of the circle that intercepts an arc equal in length to the radius of the circle. It is just a measurement that you can use to define an angle. So where we use 30 degrees, we also can use pi over 6. And pi over 6 is the radian measure of that of that 30 degrees so it all comes from like this is drawn out this is where it comes from it comes from the arc measurement if you remember arc measurement it's like the um pie crust okay it's a portion of that full circle so a full circle in degrees is how many 360 degrees okay which would end if we're talking about a unit circle so you're going to see this here okay the full circle would be 360 degrees all the way around from start to finish. In a unit circle or one in which it has a radius of one, that same measurement is circumference. How do we find circumference? 2 pi r. Two pi r. So if my r is one, what's the circumference of that circle? 2 pi. So all the way around in degrees is, two, is 360. All the way around in radians is 2 pi. I'm going to skip the 3 quarters. I'm going to half. If I go halfway around my circle, what would be the degree measurement? 180 degrees. And half of 2 pi is going to be what? Pi. So that would be 1 pi. If I go halfway between zero, so I'm going to the last one, halfway between zero and 180, the degree measurement would be what? 90. 90. And my radian measurement would be a half pi or pi over two. And then I'll go back to this one. If I go three quarters the way around, good to 70 degrees. And my radian would be 1 and 1 half pi or good, 3 pi over 2. So these are called our quadrant angles. This is the basis of what we will start to fill in on our unit circle. 0 on the right, pi over 2 or 90 at the top, pi or 180 on the left, uh, 3 pi over 2 or 270 on the bottom, and then it goes all the way back around to 360 or 2 pi on the right. So you're going to see a couple of things that will just say like draw the angle and it will give you that angle measurement in either degrees or radians. But you can also see it done without a pi. So let's just say it said draw something that is two radians. This is without a pi. So let's say I wanted to actually find all the way around with pi. We said was 2 pi. What do we approximate pi to be? 3.14. What's 2 times 3.14? 6.28. So all the way around my circle is 6.28 radians when you do not write it in terms of pi. So it's the same as 2 pi. Okay? One full circle. Which means... Half of that over here is going to be how much? 
3.14 or pi, right? So if it asks you to find two radians, this is how I do it. I start at zero. I would say if this is 3.14, then just a little bit less than this would be three radians, which means I have to take this curve and cut it into two more parts. About here would be two radians. About here would be one radian. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but about there. And then if I draw diameters going across my circle, I didn't do a good job of going through the center there, but you get the kind of concept. Then this is four, five, six radians. So if I asked you to find something or an angle that is two radians, it would start at zero and it would end about here. That would be two radians. Again, it's an approximation. It's not going to be exact. But if it gives it to you without being in terms of pi, I think in terms of pi we get pretty good at. But I think it's harder when it's not in terms of pi. So I'm going to do that one more time so that we see it happen. I draw a circle. You can even draw the center and the radi I mean the diameter if you want. Oops, I don't want another circle. And we said on the right this would be zero, so this would be 3.14. And then it would double back around to 6.28. And then we said just a little bit less than 3.14 would be 3. Cut this into two other equal, almost, parts. That's 1 and 2 radians. And then draw the diameters through the circle, I mean through the center, to the other side from each of those. And I get 4, 5, 6. So if it asked me to find a radian that was 4.5 radians, I would start at zero and I'd go halfway between four and five and my angle would be about that size. This does not happen a lot, but it is going to come up, so I want you to know how to do it, okay? But you will be more, it is way more common to have it in terms of pi than it is to have it without it. But if it is in terms of pi, you could also do the same thing we just did. You would just have to multiply it times pi. Valerie. Oh, it's You're good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So this one says draw and label each angle in center position. State which quadrant the angle lies in. So we don't need a circle. If you need the circle as your guide, you can draw it, but you don't need it. Three point or three pi over two is where? It's at the bottom. So I would start here, and I would go to here. And that would be three, well, I can name it, that little symbol is alpha, or I can name it three pi over two. But you also want to give it its direction, so you know if it's positive or negative. What quadrant does that lie in? Trick question. How do we call that? Where's the terminal side? Mm-mm. Zero? Mm-mm. Is it zero? Nope. What do you, how do you, what quadrant would a point be in if it was here? It's not a quadrant. We would call it the y-axis. Good. Do we remember that? Yeah. All right. Do the same thing for beta. That's what that one is. And this is 2 pi, which is all the way back around, and that would be x-axis. Good. And then the last one is 7 pi over 4. Now let's pretend we know nothing about our unit circle yet. 7 over 4 is what mixed number? 1 and 3 fourths. So if I start at 0, the top was a half. The left is 1. The bottom is 1 and a half. And back around to the beginning is 2. Where does 1 and 3 fourths lie? in the fourth quadrant, halfway between one and a half and two.
You can either use the Roman numerals or you could literally write quadrant four. Just know what a Roman numeral is. If it was multiple choice, you'd need to be able to identify that. Question so far. All right. Coterminal angles are defined as angles that are in center position that have the same terminal side, which means they start the same spot, they end the same spot, so this angle would also have the same, would also be terminal. If I went around one more time, those would be coterminal angles. So I can either go around one last time, I could have a negative angle that ends the same spot, but the terminal and the initial are the same. They don't have to be, excuse me, they don't have to be on the axis. I could have said something like 30, well, that's more like 45 degrees. I could say 30 degrees would be one angle, but I can also say 390 degrees start and end at the same spot. Those are called coterminal angles. In radians, we're going to add and subtract 2 pi. I want to go one more full time around my circle, or I want to go one less time around my circle. So in, in radians, it says to find two positive and negative angles that are coterminal to the given angle. So we're going to find two of each. So if I want to find a positive coterminal angle to negative 3 pi over 4, I'm going to do what? Add 2 pi. I need it to be over 4, so this becomes 8 pi over 4, and I get 5 pi over 4. That is one positive coterminal angle. I need another one, so what do I do? Add it again. Plus 8 pi over 4, and I get 13 pi over 4. These are my positive coterminal. Because I have to add 2 pi each time. So 2 pi is the same thing as 8 pi over 4. I've got to give it a like denominator. There's a lot of that stuff in this chapter. Sure. All right, now I need two negative ones. So how do I find those? Subtract 2 pi, which we already know is 8 pi over 4. I get negative 11 pi over 4. That's the first negative one. And now I need another. So I do it again. I get negative 19 pi over 4. Now listen to me carefully. Your negatives have to be negatives and your positives have to be positive. So if I had something at the beginning that said negative 4 pi, that's my initial angle and I want to find a positive coterminal angle, I would add 2 pi, right? So if I add 2 pi to this, what happens? It's still negative. Is that a positive coterminal angle? No. no. So I have to add 2 pi again. Does that work? Yes. Zero is considered to be, you could actually consider it to be both. But And then again, another one, I would add 2 pi again. Oops. Now, can I use negative 2 pi? Why did I hit a raise? Negative 2 pi as a negative coterminal angle? Yes. Okay, that was your question, right? You don't have to subtract to get negative, and you don't have to add to get positive. If, it, if you do either or, and you end up getting, like if I add but I get a negative, that's still a negative coterminal angle. You just have to keep adding until it gets positive if you want a positive one. All right, go to B. So my positive coterminal angle this time, I'm going to add what? 2 pi, which would be? 12 pi over 6. And I get 17 pi over 6. And then I have to do it again. And I get 29 pi over 6. Those are my two positive coterminal angles. And then for negative, I'm going to subtract 12 pi over 6. I get negative 7 pi over 6. That's the first one. Subtract 12 pi over 6 again, and I get negative 19 pi over 6. And those are my two negative ones. All 
All right, so now everything we just talked about in radians, we're now going to talk about in degrees, okay? We already did the four quadrant angles. We are going to eventually build this whole thing, but we'll start that tomorrow. For right now, what you need to know is that zeros on the left, 90s on the top, sorry, zeros on the right, 90s at the top, 180s on the left, 270s on the bottom, and then it would double back around to 360. If I went in the negative direction, now zero is still on the right, but I'm going to negative 90s on the bottom, negative 180s on the left, negative 270s at the top, and it would double back around to negative 360. So the negatives, of course, go the other way. And again, tomorrow I'll teach you a trick to fill in all those other angles, but eventually you will do them all. So if I want to find a coterminal in degrees, I want to go one more circle all the way around, either in the positive or the negative, which means instead of adding 2 pi, we're going to add 360 degrees. Instead of subtracting 2 pi, we're going to subtract 360 degrees. No. For this, you wouldn't. There are times you'll get it, but not for this. If I want to convert from radians to degrees or degree to radian, this is my conversion. So if I'm going from degrees to radians, I take my angle measurement, which will be in degrees, and I multiply it times pi over 180. If I want to go from radians to degrees, I take my angle measurement and I multiply it times 180 over pi. So when I want to convert from 31 degrees, I'm going to do 31. And I'm going to go to second apps, which is where that angles menu is. Second apps. And I grab that first thing, which is the degree symbol. And then I go 47, second apps. I go back to that same one. I go to the single tick mark. I hit enter. And then I go to 12, and I know what you're thinking. You go back to that same menu. You're wrong. Apparently, that would make too much sense. Your double tick mark is above your plus symbol down here in green, which means you alpha, and you hit that button. And then you just hit enter, and it's going to convert you into decimal degree. Yep. So the second apps is where both the degree and the one tick mark are but alpha plus is where the double tick mark is did you find it yeah okay and then you just hit enter now if i want to go back the other way or i'm giving it in decimal degree and i want to put it in degree minute second notation then I would type in that thing, so that 31.7866, whatever that is. So let's say I have 31.786667. Let's say that's the angle given to me. I rounded it. I go back to second apps. I go back to that same menu. And the fourth thing in the line is arrow DMS. And that says put it back in degree, minute, second, notation. Yep, so the same 31.786, whatever, 8667, whatever the original one is. I rounded it different this time. It doesn't really matter. I go second, apps, and fourth thing in the line is arrow DMS. And then I hit enter, and it's going to convert it back into degree, minute, second, notation. Now, if your calculator didn't have the capabilities that ours do, or you're not using a graphing calculator, you're using a scientific calculator, or you're doing this by hand, then the way you go from, degr from degree minute second into decimal degree is you take your minutes, which is 47, and divide them by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And then you take your seconds, which is 12 in this case, and you divide them by how many seconds are in an hour, which is 3,600. And then you would literally add those three numbers together to get it. But most of our calculators have that DMS. Again, if you were like using your calculator, like, like say you're doing your homework and you're using your phone calculator, it doesn't. Those you would use that way. Uh, all right, so this one says convert the angle from radians to degrees or vice versa. 
So if I want to go from, remember if I'm going from degrees to radians, I would multiply theta times pi over 180. And if I'm going to radians to degrees, I am multiplying theta times one, this is an 80, 180 over pi. So 30, and that says 30 degrees, just because it doesn't have a pi doesn't necessarily mean it's a, a degree, right? Like two without anything is a radians. Two degrees would have to have degrees on it. Yeah. All right, so 30 degrees would be times pi over 180. And then I want to simplify this so I can literally cancel through the zeros. Or 3 goes into 18 six times, and this is pi over 6. So it would be pi over 6 without a degree. It's already radians. 160 would be the same, pi over 180. And I can cancel through the zeros. And then 2 goes into both 16 and 18. It would be 8 and 9. And this would be 8 pi over 9. B and D are both in radians. So if it's pi over 2, I want to do times 180 over pi. The pi's cancel. And 2 goes into 180 90 times. So it's 90, and you need the degree symbol. And then D times 180 over pi. These cancel. 4 goes into 180. Well, you could do 2 and 90, but then it goes again, 4 and 45. And I have 3 times 45, or 135. Questions on that one? Good. Okay, I'll actually stop.